The movie, which is done in a found footage style, is about a documentary made by medical student Mia and her crew. She wants to make a documentary about Alzheimer's disease for her school's final project. On the 12th of October 2013, Mia and her crew head to Exuma, Virginia to do a preliminary interview with one of the candidates for their documentary. They're greeted by the patient's daughter, Sarah Logan, who seems nervous but excited to introduce her mother, Deborah Logan. They're kind of giving me old money vibes with their tenseness and forced hospitality. While Deborah prepares to greet the crew properly, Sarah asks Mia about the monetary compensation that's promised if they're chosen as the documentary's subjects. Mia assures her that the compensation will be granted and her campus will also help with Deborah's medical fees. However, after Mia explains how they're going to film the documentary, Deborah seems to be having second thoughts because she's a very private person and decides to back down from being a candidate. Sarah tries to talk her into it because they need the money to keep their house and so Deborah agrees. Wow, that must be a tough call. A week later, the crew returns to the house and plans to stay there while they shoot the documentary. Gavin, one of the crew, feels restricted and unsatisfied with his room. However, Sarah reminds him to still say thank you to Deborah so she doesn't get angry. Geez, that's so weird. Deborah exhibits signs of her disease when she completely forgets about having been to Germany when asked by Mia. It turns out that Mia wants the documentary to also highlight the effects of Alzheimer's on the patient's primary caregiver, which in this case is Sarah. The documentary shows how Deborah is struggling to do daily tasks and how frustrated she is about her condition because she used to be a tough single mother who provided for Sarah after her husband died. Even her neighbor and close friend, Harris, talks about her strength. I take it back, Deborah may seem uptight, but it must be because life hasn't been easy for her. In the present, they're filming Deborah gardening and handling a snake when Mia shows up, prompting Deborah to suddenly be in front of the camera. That's concerning. Then, the last crew member named Louis sets up some CCTV cameras throughout the house. Sometime later, Deborah is throwing a tantrum and pointing a knife at Gavin, claiming that he had stolen her precious gardening spade. After managing to take away the knife, the crew manages to find her spade in the freezer. However, when Sarah wants to return it, Deborah seems to be talking to herself about someone knowing something before turning around and scratching her neck bloody. Hmm, that's definitely not creepy at all, sure. They take Deborah to the hospital the next day where her doctor, Nazir, says that her Alzheimer's is progressing more aggressively than they thought. On their way home, Deborah apologizes for her behavior to Gavin. Sarah considers putting her mother in hospice care which is strongly disagreed upon by Harris. Are you sure you know what's best for Deborah, old man? We can see that Deborah's creepy behaviors are increasing, such as painting a mysterious dark figure in the woods or sitting alone in her room while talking to herself in the mirror, telling someone not to come near the house. Meanwhile, Mia is measuring Sarah's blood pressure as part of her monitoring the impacts of being a primary caregiver. It seems like Sarah deals with the stress by indulging in alcohol. She and the crew decide to drink together on the porch when she tells them about Deborah sending her to boarding school when she was 10 because she was caught kissing a girl in their garage. Sarah is gay and struggles to tell her girlfriend about what's really happening with her mother. She seems really stressed, I feel bad for her. One night, Louis is with Sarah when they hear a loud thumping noise. They later find Deborah looking outside of a window, and Sarah explains that she's convinced that someone is trying to sneak into her precious garden. Deborah even starts to nail down the windows but Sarah just lets her do it. Again, weird. Later, the CCTV footage shows Deborah jolting awake at around 1 a.m. before going missing. When they find her, she's on the lawn stabbing at the ground with her spade in a manic state. They manage to calm her down and take her home, but the crew sees a clip from before Deborah went outside of her teleporting up the stove to get her spade. Didn't know Alzheimer's came with a teleporting problem. They show it to Sarah, who is also baffled and she starts getting frustrated because Deborah won't even consider going to a care home for her own safety. Matters get worse when Sarah pushes Deborah with a video of her hallucinating on the lawn, which makes Deborah go into another episode. They decide to bring Deborah to the hospital for tests because her condition is unlike other Alzheimer's patients. Unfortunately, the tests only bring more questions and now Deborah is suffering from a skin condition. Gosh, this lady doesn't get any breaks, huh? It's now day 41 of the filming and the crew returns to Deborah's house only to find Sarah and Harris restraining her, who is flailing and groaning out loud after eating some figurines. They had to pack away any mouth-sized stuff around the house the next day while Gavin plans to hang a crucifix by the window. 
He enters a dark room that night and is surprised to suddenly see Deborah near the window, talking in a low growl before the window opens by itself. This leads Gavin and Lewis to ask Mia to pay them double because they're freaked out. If I were them, I would just quit honestly. One night, they're woken up by a loud ringing which turns out to be Deborah's old switchboard. The power is out and they all head to an attic where Lewis sees a naked Deborah sitting in front of the switchboard, muttering something in a deep growl. I would pee my pants if I see that. Sarah manages to get her out of the trance and calls Dr. Nazir to the house, who later gives Mia a set of sedatives in case they need to restrain Deborah. She also recommends Sarah figure out who Deborah's trying to reach on the switchboard, thinking that it would help with Deborah's condition. Then Gavin finds out that Deborah was growling in French earlier about snakes and sacrifices. It's definitely not right since Sarah says that her mother doesn't know French. They decide to go look for client number 337, which Deborah tried to ring on the switchboard earlier. Some clever tricks reveal that it's a man named Desjardins, a doctor who used to run a local clinic nearby before he went missing 30 years ago and was suspected of murdering four young girls. People suspect that he was trying to perform a Moroccan snake ritual for immortality because he had a terminal disease, but they only found four out of the five needed victims. The next day, they ask Deborah about it, but she says that Desjardins was murdered, not missing before she pukes up a lot of soil. That's what I call an extremely natural diet. Deborah is taken to stay at the hospital, but the info about Desjardins makes Mia think that Harris' disapproval of the crew is because he's trying to cover up his murder of Desjardins. They found that he was questioned twice when Desjardins disappeared. Suddenly, Harris starts to drunkenly shoot Gavin's van, making them call 911. He later gets dragged to jail by the sheriff, Linda, who offers her support for Sarah and Deborah. What a sweet lady! However, this leads to Gavin quitting the crew for good since his van is already shot up. Meanwhile, in the hospital, Deborah has escaped her room and kidnapped a young girl who has cancer. They eventually find her in an abandoned part of the hospital, holding the girl's hand who starts to mumble something about not hurting the good man. Can this movie get any more disturbing? They manage to separate the two which makes Deborah go into another monster-like tantrum. This causes Sarah to seek a pastor for an exorcism, but when he refuses, she and Mia goes to an anthropologist who tells them of a similar case that happened in Africa. The sick mother's rampant behavior was finally gone after a shaman had burned the body of the person that supposedly possessed her. Pretty hardcore. In the hospital, Harris decides to visit Deborah, who begs for death, so he chokes her with a pillow. Well, that's unexpected. This makes her telekinetically throw the TV at him, causing him to need surgery. Before he goes under, he tells Sarah that Deborah killed Desjardins because Sarah was supposed to be his final victim and had buried his body by the statue in their yard. So she and the crew head back to the house and start digging there. They eventually find Deborah's spade, meaning that she already got to the body first. They search around the house for it and eventually find the remains hidden in the attic. They try to burn the remains which had turned into snakes, but an explosion knocks them back and puts out the fire. Exploding snakes sounds like double the danger. Then Sarah gets a call that her mother and the young cancer patient are missing. She thinks that Desjardins is possessing Deborah to complete his ritual, so she instructs everyone to go to the Moroccan Mill Cave where Desjardins used to perform his ritual. Moroccan ritual at the Moroccan Mill, I see. They find Deborah and the girl holding hands, so they prepare to raid while Mia prepares the sedative for Deborah. When they try to apprehend Deborah, she spits acidic venom on one of the policemen before running inside the mill with the girl. Is she literally turning into a snake or something? Lewis is tasked to help the injured officer downhill, so now Mia holds the camera as they follow Deborah to the mill. Unfortunately, she and Sarah hears a gunshot and finds the sheriff dead. The two panicked and pursued Deborah by crawling into the caves, ultimately finding her trying to swallow the child whole. Now that is truly horrifying. Sarah shoots a gun to distract Deborah from eating the kid, which causes her jaw to look even more horrifying than the previous scene. Sarah tries to get her mother to fight for control, and thankfully she manages to stave off Desjardins enough to let Mia sedate her. Eventually, Sarah burns Desjardins' remains successfully, and it seems like the nightmare is over. Phew, about time. In the aftermath, Deborah is determined unfit to stand trial as her condition has deteriorated even further in the next few months. Meanwhile, the young girl is now safe at home and has been miraculously cured of her cancer. The movie ends with her being interviewed at her birthday party. She says that she has a secret plan and sinisterly looks at the camera. Oh no, I think Desjardins' soul has been transferred to her body. 
I think this movie is a great watch for people who like found footage styled movies. It feels amateur enough to sell the style but is still edited somewhat professionally, making it a comfortable watching experience. The story is also interesting, incorporating the supernatural with an already terrifying- Thanks for watching another Essential Recap. Please like and subscribe, and leave a comment what you'd like to see next.